Hey guys, so now we actually move into new stuff that is uh, exclusive to chapter 6, which really the big thing of section 5 is the exponential of a matrix. And so, I mean, I for one remember when I was taking differential equations and my professor told me, alright, today what we're going to do is we're going to exponentiate a matrix. Uh, I kind of lost my mind because I didn't know like what that could possibly mean and uh, like why it would ever be useful, but it turns out it's very useful and it's relative, relatively easy to do. Um, and it kind of just comes from the fundamental matrix solution. So let's just dive right in. So recall that the fundamental matrix solution is essentially just the general solution without the arbit arbitrary constants. So for reference, what you're usually solving for is something like this. Take out the C1 and C2s and just make each x uh, its own column, and that is your fundamental matrix solution. Easy as that. Remember these little x's are like e lambda 1 t times v1, right? Same thing here, this would be like e lambda 2 t v2. Just to be, you know, very specific. And so now let's try to understand what is a matrix exponential and what it can possibly do for us. So I want you to consider these two problems. So on the left hand side we have a first order very easy differential equation with a very easy initial value so a very very easy initial value problem and on the right we have kind of the analog right but it's in matrix or systems world if you want to say that. Um, and so really what we've learned here and what you've I hope you've been learning from these videos and from your time in DiffEQ is that you can draw analogs from these different chapters they're all really intertwined they're all really telling the same story here about differential equations and so let's try to solve the left one first and see what that means for us as we go forward okay by the way this first one here this y prime is equal to a y uh, like no kidding this is probably the most important equation like of all time um, I won't go get into it now as to why uh, but as your professors or you know if you want to email me on the GodTech server or whatever I can I can definitely talk about this for 10 to 15 minutes of why it's super important um, but it's also just an easy Google search away but I digress so this you should have been able to solve with my second video, right? So what this is really, it's just separable. This is dy dt. That is a terrible y. I hate that they always combine these lines up here. dy dt is equal to a y, right? What do you do? Separate variables, right? dy over y is equal to a dt. So now you just integrate both sides. This will give you ln of natural log absolute value of y is equal to a t plus c and then if you want to get something explicit you get y is equal to c e to the let's change this to t a and then the initial value tells you plug in zero and it should be equal to y zero which means that um, after applying the IVP that's what this arrow means it's, this is really just y is equal to y0, which is just a number, e to the ta. Great, so, I mean, not that bad, right? Let's consider this. Without you knowing almost anything about differential equations, if I posed to you what was going on on the left-hand side, and I told you that the only difference that the right-hand side and the left-hand side are is that the right-hand side deals with vectors, you know, more than likely, you would say the solution must be almost identical, right? And turns out you're right, right? I'm going to skip all these steps because it's really the same thing. What we should be getting is that the solution, in this case, x of t, this, this particular solution to this IVP should be something like e to the t, but instead of now this a constant, it's this a matrix, t a times uh, our initial condition x0 and so I put it to the right of it 
because this e to the ta is going to be a square matrix, right? And then so let's say this is two by two, and then this xo is going to be uh, two by one. So two by two times two by one is allowed. A two by one times a two by two is not allowed, right? So this is what we're trying to find. How do we find this? Why is it useful? And uh, you know, is there a set way of trying to do this like, besides, um, you know, trying to? I don't know how you would do this if you didn't know any theory. Like, I have no idea what it means to exponentiate a matrix just directly. It's really just kind of like a, like this is what e to the ta would be because it's the analog of the left-hand side problem. So, formally, really, you can always fall back on calc two, right? Old reliable calc two with its power series. Uh, e to the x is just infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So now if you take your x parameter to be ta, uh, ta to the n over n factorial, which is going to give you, when n is equal to 0, the identity matrix, plus t to the a, t times a matrix over 1, plus t times a matrix over 2 factorial, yada, 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 you keep going. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to do an infinite series in this class, unless your professor is really mean. Uh, but anyway, e to the ta is given like so, and this is really nice. All you have to do is find the fundamental matrix solution, which involves just you solving the problem anyway, and then multiplying it by the inverse of the fundamental matrix solution evaluated at time equals zero. And that's it. That's how you methodically find e to the ta. Now, I should point something out to you if it isn't already obvious. e to the zero a, and if we look at analog, right, to, uh, to just numbers, e to the 0 times 7, right, it's still e to the 0, and that's always going to have to equal 1, right, e to the 0 times, I don't care what it is, besides, you know, maybe infinity, but that's not a number, uh, is going to have to yield 1, right, so in matrix world, it makes sense that it should yield the identity matrix, which is essentially just 1 in matrices, right, so as a sanity check, if you plug in 0 everywhere you see t into your e to the ta, and you get something that isn't the identity, uh, you're wrong, I'm sorry. So keep trying, maybe you messed up one of the eigenvectors or you row reduced incorrectly. Whatever it may be, just make sure that everything is, uh, when you plug in zero for t, you should get the identity. That is one of the greatest sanity checks for this kind of problem. So now I think we should go ahead and try to solve one of these, right? I think I can't zoom down now. Oh, I think you've you've seen my joke. Uh, hopefully, you understand it. Some of my students think it's really corny, but I think it's I think it's funny. Every semester, I, I like laugh for like a good ninety seconds at the beginning of class because I give them this worksheet and they and they're just like, "Wow, our C our TA is so full of himself." But really, it's it's just a joke. I say find e to the Sebastian of a is equal to minus three two zero point five minus three or whatever matrix, right? And they're thinking, like, what does that mean, right? Do we find, like, E, do we put Sebastian on top of the matrix? Do we do we exponentiate the matrix and then multiply by Sebastian? What does that mean? I'm just trying to be funny. My name's Sebastian, and I'm a TA. All right, I want you to find E to the TA of this matrix A. All right, so just calm down, all right? Anyway, I have too much fun with this stuff, uh, if you can't already tell by my voice. Um, and my numerous videos for this uh, video series that I decided to make. Do the same thing you always do. Determinant A minus lambda I. I really hope you know how to do this by now because we've done it so many times. Uh, I'm just going to tell you this yields lambda is equal to minus 2 and minus 4. Right? For lambda is equal to minus 2, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the V1 is going to be 2, 1, and then for lambda is equal to minus 4, this yields v2 is equal to, oh, that's great, 2 minus 1. Wow. Groundbreaking. All right. So what this means is your fundamental matrix solution, big X of T, is just each column is the eigenpair, right? So... The first one is going to be e minus 2t multiply onto this 2, 1. So that's uh, 2 e minus 2t. And then 1 t 
times e minus 2t, which is e minus 2t. And then the second column is the eigenpair associated with these guys, right? So that's e minus 4t times the second eigenvector. So that's 2e minus 4t. I don't want that to look like a 9, because that will confuse you. It confuses me too a little. Um, and then this is minus e minus 4t. Wow, that is that is just not good. Uh, Georgia Tech, like, uh, IT department, if you for some reason watch my videos, um, please get better pens for your touch screens. Uh, I think a lot of people would kind of appreciate it. Um, but, just you know, just food for thought. I don't know how much these cost, actually. They could cost a lot and mean bankruptcy for some department. So, I don't know. If it was me, I would get better pens. But, anyway. That's X of T. Right, that is your fundamental matrix solution. Looks good. Now, uh, there's two ways you can go about this. What you really want to find now is X of 0 minus 1, right? There's two ways, right? And this is starting out. You can do either one. I have a strong preference for one, as I'll let you know right now. You can either find the inverse of this first, which would be doing this, right, finding the inverse, and then you can evaluate it at zero. God, these minus ones are just so bad. And now it's doing that. Great. Okay. And then evaluate it at zero. Okay, just pretend that's a one. I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Or you can evaluate it at zero and then take the inverse of it. Seemingly the same, right? Please do this one. Starting out, please do this one. I much rather you take the inverse of a matrix that has numbers in it than functions starting out. Okay, keep in mind for the next section you're gonna have to do it the other way. But starting out for this, please just do it this way. First evaluate at zero and then take the inverse of it. Okay? So now that we got that out of the way. Let's evaluate what it is at zero. So x at zero is equal to just whatever's in front of them, right? Because they're all exponentials. This is 2, 1, 2, minus 1. The inverse of this would then be 1 over the determinant, which is just going to be minus 4. And then you switch a and d, right? So this is minus 1, 2, and then you negate b and c, so minus 2, minus 1. And then, so this is really just, uh, you can leave it like that, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to put it inside, though, um, just because that's what I've been used to. So, it's a one-fourth right there. It's another one-fourth. That is so frustrating. I don't know why this pen is so bad today. Uh, one-half, right? And then minus one-half. Great. So, by our definition, e to the ta is just the multiplication of those two matrices, the fundamental matrix solution and this uh, fundamental matrix evalu inverse of it evaluated at zero. So, therefore, the e to the ta for that particular uh, matrix, or e to the Sebastian, if you, if you so choose to call it that, is x of t, which is the fundamental matrix solution. And remember, order does matter. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Maybe that might be another reason why some of my students get this wrong. Huh, okay, I'll, I'll make sure to mention that the next couple of times I teach it. So order does matter. I shouldn't have to say it, but it, it does. So it's always the fundamental matrix solution multiplied by its inverse evaluated at zero, okay? So e minus 2t and then minus e minus 4t multiplied by this guy right here. So 1 fourth, 1 half, 1 fourth, minus 1 half. And then carry this out, right? Uh, and you will get the following. You will get... And these do tend to be kind of long sometimes, but that's okay. They should be because it is a lot of matrix multiplication. So that is what I get for my first element. 
And then my second element will be 1 fourth e to the minus 2t minus 1 fourth e to the minus 4t. This element right here is going to be e minus 2t minus e minus 4t. And then this last element over here is 1 half e to the minus 2t plus 1 half e to the minus 4t. And that's it. Now, remember the sanity check, right? Plug in 0 everywhere that you see, right? The top left element is going to yield 1 half plus 1 half, so that's 1. That's good. That second element, the e minus 2t minus e minus 4t, when you plug in 0, that's going to yield 0, because it's 1 minus 1. That's good. The bottom left is going to yield 1 fourth minus 1 fourth, which is 0. And then the bottom right is going to yield 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. That is the identity matrix in 2 by 2, which means that more than likely we didn't mess up. And there you go. That's how you test for that. So next section we're going to deal with basically the variation of parameters for higher order systems. And uh, that will employ some of the methods that we learned in this section. So stay tuned for that.